Hello, I'm going to do a walkthrough on how to set up the Marlin firmware on the ANET AA printer uh, using Linux. Uh, I'm currently using Linux Mint uh, 18.3. Uh, one of the first things that you're going to want to do is uh, make sure you install the Arduino IDE. Uh, you do not want to use the version under uh, the package manager. Package manager, uh, since this is a old version, uh, it's not really usable. You're going to want to remove that version, as well as removing the uh, settings files. Uh, if you go under your uh, uh, folder directories here, uh, go to home. It'll be slash home slash your username. Uh, you press Control H, which will show your hidden files. Hidden files start with a period. Uh, it'll be a dot Arduino folder, uh, similar to this one, but it won't have the little numbers behind it. Uh, remove that folder. Uh, I believe it tries copying or looking at for previous versions when you try and install it and bring in settings. Uh, I don't think it'll cause any issues, but I you know, just want to avoid anything, start from scratch, uh, be as generic as possible here. Uh, you're going to want to use the guide under here. To install it, this is the method that I use to install the software. Uh, when you go through this, uh, there is one point where you might run into an issue, but they do point it out. Uh, down here, you may uh, it talks about being added to a user group, the uh, dial-out user. Uh, you probably will not have to do this. Uh, the first boot up, it's told me to. Uh, told me that it had to be, uh, my user needed to be added to the dialogue group. It automatically added it for me. Uh, it asked for my uh, root password. I added, uh, let it do its thing. Uh, it told me to log out, so I logged out, logged back in. Then I was able to uh, use this uh, user group. Uh, but this right here, this is uh, kind of an important thing. If you cannot uh, write to the dialogue group, uh, you will not be able to uh, uh, connect to your 3D printer using this method uh, or you won't be able to connect to it until you're added to that group so uh, they do point it out uh, but you might not have to do this step you probably will just have to run the install script and that's probably all, it'll, all you will need to do uh, one of the first things that I will suggest people do when they have it all installed uh, let it boot up here. Uh, there's a few settings that I'm going to tell people that they probably will want to do right away, uh, which are setting up verbose on the uh, when you're compiling or uh, uploading. Uh, if you ever have any issues doing any of these uh, things, like if you're compiling and you're running into issues, uh, it helps... Uh, it's a useful thing to have. Um, so you don't want to go under File Preferences. Uh, and under these preferences, you're going to want to turn on verbose uploading during compilation upload. Compiler warnings, I believe, is set to none. And display line numbers. Uh, these right here, these will be the most helpful. This will also be helpful. Uh, when you're having uh, errors, you can actually look at what line is actually uh, having an issue. Uh, once you do that, you can press OK. Uh, you won't have all these files when you first boot up. Uh, this will be apparent in the next uh, uh, the next steps here. Uh, the next step would be to grab the Marlin firmware, download the zip file, extract the zip file, uh, you'll want to go under the Marlin folder, go into Marlin, then you're going to look for a .ino file, which is the basically uh, do star .ino. No, it's not doing it for me. Search for Marlin. You'll see a file right here. Uh, you'll double click on that. It'll take a little while. Uh, it'll probably start up another instance of the Arduino IDE. 
and then it'll eventually get you to this point. Uh, then you're going to want to go back to the very top of the Marlin folder here. So you'll see uh, Marlin 1.1x Marlin. There'll be a example underscore configurations. You want to go under here, go under the ANET. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do the ANET A8. Uh, it should work. For these, this whole walkthrough should work for the A6 as well. Uh, but I'm doing it for the A8. You want to copy the contents of these two files to the configuration.h. And then configuration advanced ADV. You want to do that there as well. Then you're going to want to save your thing. Uh, at this point, I'm going to show you uh, why having those uh, two things, uh, those few things turned on in the preferences. Uh, if you go up here to verify, it'll run through uh, compiling it, making sure that everything's good. Um, at this point, we don't have the boards set up. Uh, under the Arduino IDE. So it's going to give you, in general, it's going to give you this very generic error. Uh, pins for this chip uh, not defined in Arduino.h. Uh, An average user is not going to know what that means. But if you come down a little bit here, uh, look at a few lines above that, you'll see error, oops, make sure you have the ANET V10, ANET V10 Optiboot or Sanguino selected from the tools board menu. Uh, so if you go under boards, you'll see that there's nothing there. You just have the generic uh, Uno, Lulipad, you know, these are the very generic boards. Uh, so you can't really go any further until you get the board set up. So that'll be the next step here. The next step, you'll want to grab the Skynet Anet board. Uh, Skynet was the original uh, aftermarket, I guess, uh, uh, firmware that was used for the ANET uh, boards. Uh, that's been kind of taken over by, you know, Marlin's integrated it to the core of its uh, functionality, I guess you could call it. Um, we're just going to use the definitions that they've uh, created for this. So you're going to want to download that, extract it, and you'll have a hardware uh, folder here. Uh, it's got a readme.md file. Uh, it talks about Mac and Windows, but doesn't really say anything about Linux. Uh, Linux has the pretty much the same folder structure as what is used on the other operating systems, so it doesn't really matter. So we're going to take this, we're going to make a copy of it. We're going to go to Home. You're going to look for the Arduino folder. Uh, if that folder does not exist, you can just create the Arduino folder and paste it here. Uh, there should be a folder there with this libraries in it. Uh, sometimes it doesn't create it. Um, not exactly sure why, but uh, you can just create the folder and then dump this hardware folder inside of it. Uh, so now you'll have all the definitions. Uh, you're not going to have this automatically in the dropdown, so you're going to want it to close out of the IDE, start it back up, and since this is a kind of a big you know, package, it's kind of takes a while to boot every time you boot it up with the uh, all the, the Marlin code base inside of it. Uh, this is also a slow computer so it doesn't help much. I'll wait for it to boot. It's booting on my second screen. So now that they have this, you can go under Tools, Board, and you've got to scroll down. I just use the ANET V1.0. I just use that one. You can now do a verify on it. Let it go through. Uh, and these are just notices. This is uh, the verbose text in orange here. I'll go through the whole thing. It's 
It's almost done. Uh, once we get down here, uh, updates. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is the last message. Uh, looks like everything went through. Uh, the next, the next step would be to try and connect it to your printer. So right here, you can see I just went to tools, port. Uh, this is a generic serial port that's on the back of this computer, uh, so that doesn't do us any good. I currently have this plugged in uh, using the USB-A cable into the uh, board. Uh, but since there's no power to the board, uh, the computer is not able to see it. So I'm going to flip it on, uh, flip the power switch on. Uh, you can see down here, powered on. Now if we go to tools, we'll see that it automatically selected in my case, it automatically selected the USB zero. Uh, sometimes you'll have to check it in the, the box there. Uh, I'm not sure why this board doesn't take five volt power from the USB, but I guess it's you know safer that way. You're not going to fry your computer. Then uh, now you can click on this uh, uh, upload. Uh, this will take a little bit longer than the previous one run. Uh, if you take a look at the screen here on the printer, eventually once this uh, is done compiling, it will uh, restart and you'll see the Marlin text on the screen. Uh, you can see it down here, it's writing the firmware. Like I said, it, this takes a fair bit of time, even on a fast computer, because uh, this is actually doing the writing to the uh, the printer board here. Uh, some of the settings that you'll probably end up uh, touching will be the steps per millimeter for the extruder. Uh, one of the things that I did notice, uh, there's a lot of uh, over extrusion on the default settings, so Oh, you can see the Merlin firmware there. There's a the default install. It's not perfect. It gets you a printable thing. I just stopped the print here. Uh, I mean, this is a benchy here. It gets you going if, the for some reason, the firmware on the printer isn't working or you want to just kind of start from scratch and uh, start tweaking your settings. But at this point, I now have uh, all the settings. Oh, let me make that big here. Uh, there we go. Now we have all the settings. Uh, the This button over here on my printer, so if I go under menu and then I press this, uh, the de default uh, firmware allows me to go in there, but it kicks me back out. Uh, so if you want to go under prepare, you have to use the menu button. Uh, it's a little bit different than the, the stock firmware, uh, but you know, just tiny little things. So let's do the uh, it there again. Prepare, move access, move X, move it 10. Uh, the very, very basic uh, firmware. Uh, if anybody remembers that uh, my other printer does this really bad, it's uh, the first time you move that, it just crashes into the end stop before actually moving. And then you think, well, what's going on? And you start adding, you know, you'll tell it to move 10 this way, but it'll crash back into that. And then it'll start going in that direction again. Uh, and they obviously uh, fixed it in this uh, firmware. Uh, oh, you press menu to go back. Uh, yeah, so that's how you uh, flash your firmware here. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll have all these links in the bottom of the video. Uh, but if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you. Bye.